Hello everyone. I welcome you all to JK Tech Solution YouTube channel. Today in our channel, I am going to walk you through the design and simulation of half wave dipole antenna in ANSI HFS software. Let's we start with mathematical calculation. So these are the design parameters that we are going to consider for designing half wave dipole antenna. That is dipole length, dipole radius, and then gap length. So the, these three parameters are going to use to design an antenna. So for calculating these three design parameters, we have an online tool. Called antenna calculator dot blogspot dot com. So I have given this tool link in the description box, and I also provided the QR code for scanning. You can just refer this QR code, or else you can just refer the description box. Here we are going to design it for two point six gigahertz, and then we have calculated uh, dipole length, gap length, and dipole radius from this tool. Okay, we are given it in millimeter. Here for dipole length, I have given the notation as DL. And for gap length, I have given a notation as GL, and for dipole radius, I have given a notation as DR. So these are the notations that we are going to use in ANSYS HFS software. So we just get into the online tool and we just calculate the design parameters. I am just clicking this link for dipole and my calculator. So here we need to enter the frequency in gigahertz. Okay, I am entering 2.6 gigahertz. For 2.6 gigahertz, I am getting dipole length as 55.0, gap length as 0.2750, and dipole radius as 0.1154. So these are all the design parameters that we have received from the online tool. So now let me start the simulation ANSYS HFSs. So after opening ANSYS HFSs, click on File, New, then you click here HFSs. After clicking HFSs, click HFSs and you. And uh, click solution types, and in options you need to click network analysis and model, not terminal. Okay, so otherwise there will be some pr problem in assigning port. So that I am giving it model. Then give okay. So after giving it, we need to assign variables, uh, and then we also assign the value to the variables. For that, click HFSs and click the design properties. Just give it a button add. So after adding, first we are going to add DL, that is dipole length. So dipole length unit we are expressing millimeters. So L. I'm just clicking the L in my keyboard. Then I'm expressing the unit as millimeter. So the value of dipole length is fifty five point double zero. Okay, double zero then double zero. Okay, then just click OK. So then we need to add gap length. Just you add and just uh, type G L, and then the unit type is length. Just click L. Then in millimeter, the value of uh, gap length is zero point two seven five zero, and just give okay. The next variable that I'm going to assign is dipole radius. That is dr. The unit type is length. Similarly, millimeter. Then the value that we are going to assign is zero point double one five four. So, so these are all the variables that we have calculated from antenna calculator blocks for term. That is dl, gl, and then dr. Just give apply. And then okay. So after clicking this, the next step that we need to do is creating a 3D pod. So first we are going to create a cylinder. So just click uh, cylinder, draw cylinder. Just click on here. Just drag it, and you can give it on any dimension. We can adjust it here later. So here we need to click on cylinder one, and we give to give the name as dipole. So this is what a dipole that we are going to create here. So then the material that we are going to assign here is spec. PEC pack material we are going to assign here. Just click on here, search by name PEC, then just give double click on it, so you will get the pack material. Then give apply, and then click OK. So then click create cylinder. After clicking create cylinder, the dimensions are zero, comma zero, comma. Then we are going to minus DL by two. So we have already declared the DL value in the design variables. Okay, so that uh, the value automatically came here. We have already minus twenty seven point five millimeter, and then the radius of the dipole is dr. Already we, these two we have assigned, and the height of the dipole is dl. Okay, so these are all the parameters that we have assigned into dipole. Just give apply, and then okay, and then you just click fit all. You can just see the enter view of our dipole. Then next step, what we need to is just click dipole and then write uh, give control C copy and then just take it and just give control V. So here dipole one is created. So we need to just rename this dipole one as port. 
P-O-R-T, port. Okay, just we have rename it as port. Then here we need to edit the material to vacuum. Then just click apply and then okay. So in this, we need to assign the variables to the port also. So just click the create cylinder. And instead of minus DL by 2, here we need to assign it as minus GL by 2. Okay, so just assign minus GL by 2. And radius is same as DR. And the height is GL. That is what gap length. Just assign the values and then just give apply and then click on OK. So here we have created a dipole and then the port. So these two parts we have created. The next step what we need to do is to subtract the dipole and the port. For that you just click the control and click the dipole and then port. So then you will see here subtract. Okay, subtract object. You just give subtract. So in the blank part, you need to have dipole and the tool part, you need to have port. So after clicking this clone tool object before operation, you just need to click this and then give OK. Then you will be uh, subtract a dipole and the port is subtracted. The next step, what we need to do here is we need to select port. So just select port, right click on it and then give edit surface section here. What plane we need to create here is YZ plane. Okay, so that we can able to assign the port YZ plane. Just click OK. So after uh, creating YZ plane, as you can see here is a port. So you can see here the pink color port. What you see? Okay. So this is what the YZ plane we are giving. The next uh, point of us to assign excitation. Okay. So for assigning excitation, just click the just click the port section. And just uh, assign excitation port lumped port. Here we need to give lumped port. Here we are going to give the impedance as 73 ohm. Then next. And then none, we are going to create a new line. After creating a new line, you just uh, zoom it. And then you will get a triangle here. This point we are getting triangle. At center point, we will mark a triangle. Then you just mark it to upper region. So after marking, the line is defined. If the line is defined, then your uh, excitation that you are giving is correct. Otherwise, there will be some mistake in it. Okay. So after define, give next. And then our uh, full port impedance is 73 ohm. Then just give finish. So we have completed this part. We have completed assigning excitation. The next, uh, see, you can just click on a project 59 plus and then HFS design. So we have successfully assigned the excitation. As you can see here, as I click this, there is some region that is finding here. The next we need to assign the boundary. So for assigning the boundary, just right click on the plane and then create open region. So here we are going to operate the uh, uh, dipole and as 2.6 gigahertz. Just type 2.6 gigahertz and then give OK. So after uh, giving 2.6 gigahertz, our boundary is created. So as you can see here, our boundary is created. The next what we need to give is to give an analyzing setup. So before getting an analysis, just click on radiation. And then here 3D, just click on 3D. So here 3D, you need to give from start theta value should start from 0 to 360. So that you can calculate the entire uh, angle. So 360 degree. So you need to just give 360 degree and then give OK. So here we have assigned the radiation also. The next part we need to give is assign analysis. So just click analysis. And then add solution setup, advanced. Here we are going to operate our antenna at 2.6 gigahertz. So just give OK. Then here the next screen will come. So here the starting gigahertz value should be 1 gigahertz. And we end our gigahertz 5 gigahertz. OK. So starting is n 1 gigahertz and ending point is 5 gigahertz. Just give OK. So after doing this step, we need to validate our design. So to check how our design, whatever design is correct or not, click HFSS. And then give validation check. So here all the things that is design settings, TD model, boundaries and excitation, mess operation, analysis setup, optometric radiation, all are in green tick. So our design is 100% correct. If anything, we have a cross mark, then we have made some mistake in design. You need to rectify it. So for us, the design is correct. So we just close it. Now we are going to give the analyzing setup. Okay, so just use HFSS and give analyze all. So after analyzing, it will take some time. We need to save the file. Okay, so we just save it as dipole antenna design. Antenna design one. Okay, just save it here. 
So after saving, our simulation will start here. It will take around one or two minutes to simulate. You can just able to see here. It will take some time for simulation. You need to wait for two to three minutes. simulation part is now over so we can just verify the results right now so for that we need to just click hfss results create model solution terminal report rectangular plot and then s parameter we need to plot s parameter and then s11 in decibels so here a decibels i am giving it is automatically there so that if you have if you are not there you just give decibels then give new report so after giving new report our antenna is simulator at 2.5 Seven, nearly it is equal to 2.6 gigahertz. Okay, so just click marker, add marker, and you can able to see here as 2.57. Nearly it is about 2.5, uh, means it is nearly equal to 2.7 gigahertz. Next, here we can able to mark the uh, just be able to mark the bandwidth. So add marker, uh, just give escape key for that, and then just uh, give marker. Uh, add Y marker. So after giving Y marker, our uh, you need to proceed uh, give it to minus 10 decibel. So at minus 10 decibel, when you subtract it's 2.699 and then 2.444, you'll be getting the um, bandwidth. So this is what the bandwidth we need to, we are uh, we are calculating in this part. So the next that we are going to see here is VSWR voltage standing withdrawal ratio. So we just give the results, create model solution report rectangular plot and then VSWR, just click VSWR, just click new report. So after clicking new report, you just click marker, add marker, our frequency here 2.6 gigahertz. So VSWR is around 1.1878. So it, it the value must be range between one and two. So our VSWR range is correct. So we have obtained the VSWR. The next we need to attend the 3D pattern. Okay, 3D polar uh, radiation. So design, no, sorry. Click HFSS, results, create model solution report. Sorry, create far fields report. 3D spherical plot. Okay, just gain total, just give new report. Okay, so our antenna gain is maximum at 1.79 gigahertz. So this is what we have obtained in our design. So this is what our simulation we have done. Successfully done our simulation, and so these are all the parameters that we have evolved: radiation pattern, bandwidth gain, and then VSWR. So these four parameters we have evaluated in the ANSI HFSS tool. Okay, so radiation pattern. I just one second tell you. So radiation pattern here we have obtained. So these four parameters we have obtained in HFSS software. So finally, thank you. Thank you so much for watching the video patiently. I hope you to see you again in next video. Thank you.